Movement in video games is one of the major mechanics that affects how your game will be played. A grid-based movement system can be an excellent solution for a developer who wants to have a bit more control over what their players are doing. You can program the movement to work like it does in XCOM 2, where you click and a unit will move from one spot to another, changing their stats depending on what tile they're on and what the adjacent tiles are around them. Or you could create a game like Pokemon where you move on a grid, but you're using a D-pad or the, the cardinal directions to move across that grid. Hi, I'm Michael, and in this video, I'm gonna be going over the setup to creating a grid-based movement system. I'll be going over how to program our grid, create our tiles, and simple controls that allow for teleporting movement on the grid. And at the end of the video, I will give you the project as it is, along with a few ideas for little projects if you want to create something using it. Finally, this video will also be followed up by a breadth first search algorithm video, how it can be used and implemented in this project for unit movement. So please subscribe if that sounds interesting to you. So with that, let's go over to Unity. The first thing we're going to do is turn on grid snapping, which is this little button up here. With this enabled, we can easily put our tiles next to each other to build out our map. In the grid snapping drop down, you want to set your grid size to be whatever your tiles are. I'm just going to leave mine as one. Okay, so the first object we're going to create is our tiles. So we're going to right click, create empty and name this tile. We're going to reset the transform and then right click on our tile and add a mesh cube. We're just going to rename the cube to be mesh. And we're also going to add a 3D object text mesh pro, not the UI text mesh pro, the 3D object text mesh pro. And we want to import TMP essentials. If you don't have text mesh pro, you go up to window, package manager, go to the unity registry, scroll down until you find it or type it up in this text box. Now we're going to take that tile and prefab it and go into the prefab to create our tiles. All I'm going to do is set the mesh to be at Y 0.25 and 0.2. And we're going to move the text to fit on top of, sit on top of it. And the last thing we're going to do is just right click, create material. And we're going to create a green material for this tile nice light green okay so we have our tile if we go back to our scene we can now click on this tile prefab that we put in before Control d to duplicate and we can just move it across as you can see it's making a nice easy square with our grid snapping so i'm just going to quickly make a four by four square we've got a nice four by four square of tiles don't worry too much about the coordinates just yet saying zero zero we're going to handle that later we are just going to quickly create another empty game object and call this tiles and stick all of our tiles inside of it just to keep our inspector nice and clean. We're just going to jump back into the prefab because I forgot we need to remove the box collider from the mesh and add it onto the tile, the game object tile. Now we're going to create our unit. So right click, create empty, and we want to name that unit. Inside that, we're going to create a 3D object capsule. Uh, we're also going to make sure our transform on our unit is reset. So it's zero, zero. We'll then jump onto the mesh and quickly make it smaller. So we'll say 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and move it up a touch. And perfect, we're sitting on top of it. And we're gonna give this unit a nice red material. So create material, call it red, and set it to a nice red that will stand out from the tiles. We're then going to remove the capsule collider from this and give the capsule collider to the unit game object instead. Now the last thing we're going to do before we do some programming, we're going to go up to our tags up here. We're going to click add tag and we're going to create two new tags, one for tile and one for unit. And we will give the unit tag to our unit and the tile tag to our tile prefab, which should propagate down to all of our other tiles. Okay, we're now ready to start programming. So we're going to create two scripts right now. We're going to create a new C sharp script and call it grid manager. This is going to be responsible for handling our grid. And we're also going to create another script called node, which is going to hold information on each individual section of the grid. So our grid is going to be made up of a bunch of nodes, each holding information such as whether a unit can walk on that node or not. The node is really small, so we'll program that first. Here we are in the node script. First thing we're going to do is get rid of start and update because we do not need them. We don't need any of the features that mono behavior offers. So we're actually just going to get rid of this inheritance statement. This makes it so that node is just a class on its own. It doesn't inherit from anything. It just exists. The node needs to know where it is in the world. So we're going to store that as a vector to int. 
and we're going to name that chords. We use a vector 2 int instead of a vector 3 because we're only working in two dimensions. We're now going to create a constructor that takes in the coordinates and sets them for the node. So, this dot chords equals chords. So this will just set the chords of the node to whatever the chords are that are given to the constructor. We will be jumping back to the node later on to add a few more lines of code. But all I want to do now is just get the unit to move from one spot to another on a grid. So now we're going to jump over to our grid manager and start programming that. We're in our grid manager script. We're going to get rid of start and update because we don't need them. And we're going to create a serialized field of data type vector to int and we're going to call it grid size. Because this is a serialized field, it means it can be edited in the Unity editor. It'll make a bit more sense a little bit later. We're also going to create a serialized field with the typing of int for the Unity grid size. And we're going to create a getter for that. So public int Unity grid size with a capital letter instead of a lowercase letter. We're going to have a get return Unity grid size with a lowercase. We're also going to have a dictionary with the typings of vector to int uh, to a node. And we are going to call this grid equals a new dictionary using vector to int and node. If you don't know what a dictionary is, it's a data structure for storing key value pairs. Like in an actual dictionary where the words are the keys and the definitions to those words are the values. So in our dictionary, we're going to be using a vector to int, which is going to store the position of each node. And because each node should be in its own unique position, this can be used as the key identifier. And we'll write a getter for our dictionary as well. We're going to want to use the awake method in this class. If you don't know what the awake method is, it is part of the execution order that Unity goes through. There'll be some documentation in the description. Now we've got all our variables, we're ready to actually create the grid. So we're going to create a for loop inside a for loop. The first for loop will be for the x axis of our grid, and then the second will be for the y axis. So we'll just quickly write that out. In this nested loop, it makes it so that when it's finished creating a Y column on any given X, it will then move to the next X and create that Y column, so on and so forth until it's finished. To create the grid within our loop, we are now going to store the coordinates of whatever the X and Y are. So this gives us the X and Y or whatever coordinate we're on. So we start on zero, then we'll be on zero, one, zero, two, etc. Now we're going to create a new node using the node class that we used earlier and add it to our dictionary. In order to do that we're going to type in grid.add and we're going to use the chords as our key and our value will be a new node with the chords as its position. So now if we jump over to unity we're going to create a new empty object and call it grid manager. And we're going to stick our script onto the grid manager. Make sure its transform is at zero, zero. Remember when I said about serialized fields? That allows us to change the variables here in the editor. We want our grid size. We're going to set this to whatever the size of our grid is. We currently have a four by four. So we'll set that to four by four. And then the unit grid size is whatever your snapping options are set to. So we'll set that to one. Now, if I press play, I can tell you that it's probably working, but we can't see anything. You can't tell that it's working. So what I'm going to do now is just quickly add some code to visualize the grid and make sure it's actually working. I just added this bit of code here to make sure that the grid is actually being created. This will be commented out later. What this basically does is creates a cube game object and then positions it according to the chords in the unit grid size to show you the actual grid. Okay, so when we run this, we should see cubes that represent our grid. Yep, I mean, we can definitely see cubes, but they're just covering everything. This just shows that our grid has been made. Just as a quick note, whenever I refer to X and Y, I'm thinking and the way of looking at it like this, which actually in Unity is X and Z. Now that we know our grid is working, we don't need this. So I'm just going to quickly comment that out. Now we have our grid created. What we're going to do now is do something really cool that exists in Unity. We're going to have these numbers update themselves automatically and even update themselves over here on the inspector to wherever they are in the world. And we're just going to quickly write the script that does that. So create new C sharp script and we're going to call it labeler. Jump on into that. We're in our labeler class. We're going to get rid of our start and update method because we don't need them. We're going to tell this class to execute always. So it executes in the editor as well. So execute always. We are going to store three variables. Our first variable is going to be the label itself. So text mesh pro 
label and make sure that you've got the using statement or text tm pro up here otherwise it won't know what a text mesh pro is we're going to have a vector to int for the coordinates and we're going to have our grid manager the first thing we're going to need to do is get our grid manager and our label so we'll do that in our awake method to find the grid manager so we can use it we need to type in grid manager equals find object of type grid manager this will look for any object that has a grid manager on it and assign that to the grid manager we only have the one grid manager in our scene so this will work perfectly fine to get the label component we're going to say label equals get component in children text mesh pro this will grab the label that is the child of our tile because this class is going to be on our tile what i'm going to do is just grab the position that the game object is in and display it on the tile using the label we put there so in order to do that we're going to do chords.x equals math f dot round to int so we always have that whole number uh, transform dot position dot x divide that by our grid manager wait a minute i made a mistake in the grid manager this is supposed to say unity grid size of a lowercase u and this is supposed to be a lowercase u my bad and then we do chords dot y equals the same thing but instead of the position dot y we're going to change that to position dot z because of what i said earlier we're working on that z plane of unity finally we're going to set our label to actually read the coordinates that have been chords labels dot text equals And now I'm just going to put in a quick check to make sure we have a grid manager. If we don't have a grid manager, then we are just going to simply return. And that should stop anything going wrong if we don't have a grid manager. It just won't run this code. I'm now going to extract this code into its own method just to tidy up the class a little bit. In order to do that, we just highlight the code we want to extract, press control, full stop, press extract method, and then name it. So I'm going to name this display chords because that's what it does. So we actually do need our update method. So I'm going to stick that back in here. In our update statement, we're going to add the display chords method. So we don't have to rewrite any of that either. And then we're just going to have transform dot name equals chords dot to string. Now we're going to jump into our tile prefab and put this script onto it. So here we are in our tile prefab. What we're going to do is just simply drag labeler onto here we're going to say use old name and as you can see here our prefab is still called tile one in the world here has renamed to zero zero now if we go back to our scene you can see that all the tiles have renamed themselves depending on where they are in the world and if we move a tile the numbers will change and i think it's pretty neat so not only can we now easily build out a map that has goes out to say three by six we will also be able to use these numbers to visualize where our algorithms are taking our characters the final thing we're going to do this video is just take inputs so we can click on our unit click somewhere else and he'll just teleport straight there and we're going to call it unit controller we'll also create the game object now so we'll create an empty and name this also unit controller and reset the transform on that here we are in our unit controller class i want to make this so that we can have multiple units to select from and move on the field in order to do that we're going to store a transform and name it selected unit we're going to have a ball for if a unit is selected or not set that to false by default we're going to have a serialized field for movement speed and we're also going to get our grid manager grid manager grid manager the first thing we do in start is we grab our grid manager so grid manager equals get com uh, find object of type grid manager now to handle the input we're going to use a raycast what a raycast does is it shoots a line out of the camera and what we're going to use is the information of where it hits using the tags that we set earlier we want this to happen when the player left clicks so i'm going to say if if input dot get mouse down zero which stands for the left click we create a ray name it ray from the camera screen point to ray at the input mouse position this line of code will shoot the ray out from our camera in the direction of where our mouse is we're also going to create another variable of the data type raycast hit hit this is where the information of when a ray has hit something is stored and we're going to create a ball for has hit which equals physics dot raycast ray out hit this physics ray cast is what actually shoots out the ray our ray being declared here and our output being stored into hit now we can query this ball to see if we've hit anything so if has hit 
which means if has hit is true. We're going to check the tag of the what we hit. If hit.transform.tag is equal to tile and if hit.transform.tag equals player, sorry, unit, then we're going to do something else. So these are the two tags that we set up earlier over in Unity. If we go to a tile and click here, we'll see tile up here. And then on our unit, we should have unit. No, also the hitbox is in a weird place over there. I'll have to fix that. Anyway, back to our unit controller. If we hit a unit, we're going to store that unit as the unit we want to move. In order to do that, we're going to set our selected unit to whatever the hit transform was. And we're going to set unit selected to be true. If we click on a tile and we don't have a unit selected, we don't want to do anything. But if a unit selected, so meaning if a unit is selected, the start quads line just simply stores our selected unit's current position casted to be an int and divides it by the unity grid size. So we're not going to use the start chords or the movement speed yet. We'll be using it in the next video when we cover breadth first search. So to get our unit just to teleport from one tile to another, we just simply say selected unit dot transform dot position equals new vector three the new vector three will take in target chords dot x the current y position of our selected unit so it doesn't go up and down it just stays where it is and the target chords dot y let's jump into unity and i'll just quickly move the camera so that it can be seen okay i moved the camera so we can actually see the map if i hit play this should work I click on a tile and nothing happens. But if I click on a unit and then click on a tile, he teleports to the tile. And with the way this is programmed, we can put the unit as a prefab and then we can clone another unit, put him say here, and you can move both units. And with that, we have our grid set up with incredibly rudimentary movement. And while teleporting movement would be great for an ability of some kind, this is kind of lackluster if you ask me. That's why in the next video, I'm going to be covering breadth first search, a pathfinding algorithm, what it is, how it's used theoretically, and then implementing it into this project for pathfinding. So if that sounds interesting to you, please subscribe. This project, as it is in this video, is available to download from GitHub. The link is in the description. If you want some ideas of what you could do with this project, you could implement a third dimension so that the tiles can go up and down as well as forward and backwards, left and right. You could try and add your own pathfinding to it. That way you have something that you could compare with how I do it in my next video. And finally, maybe adding some turns so that each unit only has a set number of turns that they get to move. That's it. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.